There's something about the moon. It fascinates us, it haunts us, and now it's calling us back. And going back to the moon started as a bit of a passion project. We want to see, can we take this destination and really stand it up alongside all the rest of the destinations we've made in Destiny 2? So how can we bring back the moon with a twist, make every player realize that it's a moon, but with something new on it? Shadowkeep, the moon is entirely changed. It's completely remastered. There have been a bunch of different changes, both large and small, for players to kind of experience on their own and find. We have about double the amount of space. There's more than twice as many places you can go. You've been here before, but it's not the same. The main thing that drove us was the idea of what if there was a hive castle right on the surface. Well, we were trying to go for something that, was, that felt really imposing and really threatening. It's very spiky and red, which just kind of makes it feel more aggressive. This is the Fallen Catch from Destiny 1, and it's actually kind of resting on the surface of the moon, and the Fallen are basically making a new base using pieces of the catch. They're basically just trying to survive. There's a bunch of new lost sectors in the destination. This is one of the spaces in Destiny 1. You couldn't really go inside of it, but in Destiny 2, we kind of let you get deeper into these structures on the moon. It's meant to feel like you don't really know what you're going to find. You're not really sure how to traverse this land. On the art side, it's got a completely rebuilt skybox. Every space has top to bottom new lighting. This is actually the first space that we relit. In D1, so the lighting is a little bit more clean cut. We went with a lot more saturated colors in some spaces, but in D2, we were trying to give this feeling of desaturation and general spookiness. We wanted it to feel a little bit more mysterious. We wanted it to feel a little bit of that what's in the shadows. We're definitely um, respecting a lot of the secrets that started in D1, and we're exposing those and digging into them a lot more. We open up the game with a cinematic, taking us back into the moon with a character that knows the moon better than anybody else. Eris is, in a way, the catalyst. She's the one that woke up the beast. Imagine that we're going to have like a layer of that you know, dust and a little bit more of that rockiness on there, so when she does reach out to it, it'll wake up. Reacts to it when she touches it. Exactly. We actually just caught that moment for the first time with a lighting test. Eris discovered something under the surface of the moon, a hidden darkness. There's so much we don't know about the moon. I think a lot of this release is, is about mystery. One of the things we really liked about the moon in Destiny 1 was that it brought in this element of spacefaring and the height of humanity, right? The height of where we landed as humans before the collapse. So there's a lot of stories that we're telling about the history of humanity here. The people that built the Accelerator, the people that built all these structures on the moon. Like, what happened to them? Where did they go? We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. One small step for man. Landing on the moon in real life was a gargantuan achievement for humankind. We're coming up on the anniversary of that accomplishment. We want to pay respect and kind of like homage to that, uh, that moment in human history.